Good morning, I'm Jim Slauson, the old math teacher down the hall. Yes, that is correct. I've been teaching reluctant, resistant students longer than almost all of you have been alive. Uh, today, we're gonna talk about circles. We're gonna do a little lab and I'm gonna offer you some free materials. So let's get started. Sometime in your past, probably seventh grade, because that's where the standard is now, some math teacher stepped up to the board and they drew a circle and they drew a line through it and they told you that that had a name, it was called the diameter. And they told you there was a special number that would tell you the circumference. That special number was 3.14 and you remembered that and you just got it. Diameter times 3.14 equals circumference. And you might have got a little confused about the vocabulary first. You might have called it the outside of the circle, or you might have just remembered the number was about three. You didn't quite get it. But right away, you kind of got the whole notion that there's a relationship between diameter and circumference. Your kids did not become math teachers. They probably won't be math teachers, and they don't know that. They didn't learn it in seventh, eighth, or ninth grade. And if they're in resource, they still don't know it. And they're not like you. It's going to take 20 to 50 iterations of practice. Think 20 to 50 times you'll have to go over this before they'll learn that relationship. The first part of this lab is pretty straightforward. You've seen it a dozen times on YouTube, although I actually wrote this the first time before YouTube existed. So you'll need to gather up a bunch of different cans, shall we call them three-dimensional circles. I like a coffee can for my purposes because... I can keep all the stuff inside the can and then I've got a nice kit. You need some way to measure the circumference and a tape measure is the easiest. You can certainly use string or you can use strips of paper and they wrap it around. But these things are only $7 a dozen from YouTube, uh, excuse me, Amazon. And I would recommend that you get the white ones instead of the multicolor pack saves a lot of fussing around about who gets what color tape measure. I like to have one set for every table group, so I end up with eight sets. And we're going to measure the diameter. We're gonna measure the circumference. And this is where the lab gets better. Then we're gonna put all that information on a chart. So a couple of things. You're gonna have the can, some of them are gonna have glue and it's hard to get off. I would recommend a little goof off that you may have out in your garage for painting anyway. Let's talk about rulers. I don't like 12 inch rulers because you have the twang factor and the twirl factor and the sword fighting factor. So when I can, I use the little six inch rulers and they're plenty big enough in this lab except for the coffee can. And the way I do that is I tell the kids the diameter and they can measure the circumference. Uh, it would be good if you laid your ruler next to the tape measure to make sure that they are in fact the same height. And that's really all the stuff you need. Let's kind of get into what, what happens with the lab once the kids have collected all their data. So we have a four page lab. On the first page, we've got some vocabulary and some instructions. On the second page, we ask them to collect their data and make a chart. That's the rhythm and flow we're trying to get. And I didn't have them do the larger circle. Uh, we did average the results they got when they did the division problem and I made them show their work. Even if they use a calculator, I like them to at least show the keystrokes. On the third page, we ask them to graph the data. Hopefully it will come out with a slope of three, rise over run. And then we ask them to do some practice problems multiplying by three and dividing by three. And I'm gonna make a whole separate video about why I use pi as three in the very beginning of our class. But that's the essence of the whole thing. We like all of the labs to have a rhythm, collect some data, make a chart, make a graph, come to some conclusions. Because I have access to a nice wood shop, I was able to create a three-dimensional circle that has a circumference of 22 inches and of course a diameter of seven. And this can be used to create a whole discussion about the accurate value of pi and whether 3.14 is the appropriate measure 
of 22 sevenths. So anyway, if you have a friend who has a wood shop or you've got a friendly wood shop teacher down the hall, maybe they could make you a circle. It takes a bit of effort to get it to come out 22 on the circumference. Just thought I would throw that out there as a possibility for you. Well, clearly today's lab is not the last final word on circles. This is just the relaunch of relearning all of the circle stuff they didn't learn in seventh grade. If you'd like a nice clean copy of this lab, you can just keep watching the video past the end and I'll put up each page for four or five seconds and you can pause it and make a screenshot. Or if you'd like a really clean copy, you can email me, jim at prealgebra.net, ask for the circle circumference lab and I will email you back a PDF that has both the blank lab and the uh, answer key. Uh, thanks for watching. I am Jim Slauson, the old guy down the hall, and uh, let's make every kid successful at math. Thanks for watching.